Hey, hey, welcome to the Higher Navy Podcast. My name is Joe Way, and I am your host. And oh, do we have a good one for you today? Um, I'm going to almost say this is deja vu. And the only reason, I'm going to say that for two reasons. We've got a second person from the same university, so we're going to get into that. Uh, but also, last week's episode, I also had someone who uh, kind of came through uh, the pastoral world and in and had a similar journey as me. Uh, and this was actually completely coincidental. It just happened to work that way, as people know. Um, I-, I need to not hit repeat on that. There we go. Now our music <laughs> is done. Uh, uh, rookie move uh, by the host, but it's all right. You know, I- I- it stays in. It doesn't get edited out. That's the way this show works. So, uh, but no, this is uh, this is great. As people know, I kind of find my guest a lot of it on the Hepma channel, and just see who's getting active and and where am I seeing kind of uh, comments that make me go. You know, the things that make you go hmm. And uh, and they're just people you want to meet. And I was actually shocked to hear he's been in our world for not even a year yet. And I felt like it's been forever, which says a lot about him. And so now let's turn to everybody's favorite part of the show where I stop talking and our guest does. Uh, so, Daniel, first off, welcome. Please introduce yourself. Tell people who you are and what you do. Thank you. Uh, um, I am the uh, education educational technology uh, analyst, um, actually moving up to the ed tech engineer here uh, soon uh, at Eastern Mennonite University. Uh, There's two of us on the classroom technology team, myself and Steve Gibbs. Um, I say that uh, we're all in the process of transition. I I don't know that Steve's announced this yet. This might be kind of announcing for him a little bit, but he is moving up within the department and I'm stepping into his role, uh, which is honestly something that's really um, a little bit intimidating because uh, as you were saying, I just uh, started in uh, the AV world here. Um, I shouldn't say that completely, but I started professionally in the AV world here in January. Uh, And so Really, am, you know, as we were talking before the show, I really appreciate the community that we have here in the higher ed community because uh, it makes it a little bit easier knowing that you're you're not just jumping into all of this completely on your own, uh, mm-hmm. that we do have the community around us to reach out to and, and that they're responsive. Um, so uh, you mentioned my background uh, before this. I spent 20 years uh, pastoring churches, uh, decided to, to step away from that. Um, really just because of some personal convictions I have about church leadership and the way that it needs to change. And so for me, part of that change was was stepping away from that. Um, But this also is something, uh, the the technology skills have always been something I had in my pocket. And and it was something that uh, a lot of people sometimes considered an odd professional skill for a pastor, Uh, (laughs) but it's something that joined especially, you know, in 2020. Uh, pandemic hit and you know we had a hard shift and I had some resource people to draw on uh, to to help me with that technology but I still had to learn a lot more of it myself Uh, and certainly the AV side had to learn a lot more myself so uh, so that's that's really what landed me where I am here Um, uh, Eastern Mennonite is is a uh, faith-based institution Uh, and it's an institution that I resonate with a lot. And so a lot of that is synced. Uh, and for me, it's been a great place to get started in the field. So, so really pleased to be here, uh, really enjoying it um, and really enjoying working with all the people around me. So, Yeah, um, I, I love that. Um, it, it, there is something to be said, you know, just about that having uh, not just, you know, a higher ed that aligns, but just in, in in general, aligning, having a place where you know that you fit, it aligns with your convictions, as you said, you know, and, and I always felt that too, you know, I worked for, uh, well, two mega churches. So I was working in the church world for, you know, almost six years, seven years, and it was, um, you know, as a tech director, so make sure, and I absolutely love the church and all that stuff, but there was still something to be said about coming into higher ed, just just the, the difference. And I don't know if I can put it into words 
Um, because you don't want to put into words to then, you know, say something against the other, like being in ministry is amazing, <laughs> right? I've got great friends in ministry. Um, so, but I also feel like what we do, especially like when I was at Cal Baptist too, like we mm-hmm. still like high red is still a ministry in a weird way, right? It's still the oh, idea yeah. of service and all yes. of that, right? Yeah. So how do you feel that, that transition? Like, how are you connecting with it now? Cause they're obviously different worlds. Um, I mean, honestly, the, the, the biggest change for me is being able to lean on others day to day. Um, and it, it, it's like I say, you know, the community aspect of it, the fact that, um, I mean, gosh, in the pastorate, you know, I might spend half my day in the office writing by myself. And, uh, you know, we work out of the tech de- out of the help desk here at, at Eastern Mennonite. And so it is a constant flow of people. Um, it's constant interaction. Uh, it, you know, it's working with faculty all the time. Uh, we also have, uh, in addition to faculty, we have event AV uh, working out of our department as well. Oh. Um, occasionally I'm doing event AV. I was doing a... Uh, doing doing AV for a student recital here Saturday evening. Um, and, and so j- I think, you know, like I say, that community interaction um, is the biggest shift for me. Um, and also not having to, to reinvent the wheel, you know, every week because uh, there's, you know, a little bit less I mean, it's odd, you know, I, I can't do this without comparing, you know, it's, yeah, I know, uh, I know it's years a in one field and less than one year in the next I'm one. I'm surprised that I'm at 231 <laughs> episodes with the way I ask questions. I'm sure half the, the audience is surprised that I got this far too, but I, so I, cause it's a horrible question to ask because um, it does make a comparing computer. Comp- so let me rephrase it then. Okay. Uh, yeah. Let me yeah go ahead. My hosting abilities uh, and say, what are the things that you enjoy that out of higher ed that you didn't know that you would find. So, you know, that's an award-winning question right there. <laughs> there you go. Excellent. Um, I'm going to say I, it, it doesn't surprise me that I enjoy it. It's just the fact that, that I'm coming in every day and I don't know exactly what the day is going to bring. <laughs> I, I don't know what I'm going to be working on that day. I don't know what I'm going to be learning that day. Uh, the thing that is a pretty strong given is I'll be learning something. Mm-hmm. You know, it, 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 there's always something new to be wrestled with. Um, the the breadth of you know what what I'm tasked with um, is is just fantastic. You know, it's learning Extron programming. Um, it is. Uh, you know, fine tuning, you know, my skills on running a soundboard. Um, it's general PC troubleshooting. Like I said, we're out of the help desk. We, we're contributing there too. Um, it's, you know, the how do you configure and design a classroom well? Uh, how do you come in and troubleshoot a touch sensor uh, for, for a projector system that's not functioning correctly? Um, it, you know, and and because we're a small institution, you know, there's things that I'm sure that that a lot of larger AV departments never touch. Uh, one of my first, you know, tasks when I came in the department was uh, assembling lecterns that were then I was going to outfit with technology to go in our, you know, classrooms were upgraded. Uh, so so even that stuff, you know, even even stuff that really, you know, you'd expect to to fall. Um, more in a facilities trade or something like that kind of comes as a part of it too. And so, yeah, that, that diversity is one of the things that, that I find uh, really just gets me going every day. Mm-hmm. Yeah. You know, that, that's interesting. Uh, most people would think that that would be horrible because we never do know uh, <laughs> what, uh, what challenge is going to face us because we all, we all fear that, okay, what broke today, but I totally get it, you know, and not to do the compare and contrast, but I, I totally get that difference of, I love the fact that there's like almost a stability yet a difference, right? Like that standardization, mm-hmm. we know 
we know the basis. I remember, you know, even working in a house of worship, there was always a sense of what are we going to do better this Sunday? How are we going to change it up? How are we going to make it new? How are we going to make it unique? It's like, you know, I want standardized. I want everything to work. I want to understand how it works. But then let the situation be the difference. Let it be a commencement or let it be a special student event. Let it be a special high profile speaker or a neat, you know, a different type of class. Like, so let's let the, how it's being used differ rather than keep reinventing the thing. Yeah. Right. And yeah. that to me is one thing I love. Right. Uh, yeah. And that, that kind of consistency of it, that consistency of it. So, so now if you're in for a year, how are you feeling the growth of the technical side? I love this because I, I honestly didn't expect that answer. So this is where I'm just going to geek out for a second. Um, how are you seeing that growth? Because I know that there's a ton of listeners here who find this show because I hear it all the time. Um, I found your show because I just got into, you know, working in higher ed. And I didn't know where to go. So I just looked in, you know, Apple podcasts and it's, you know, it's the number one AV, you know, higher AV show that that's there. They yeah. click, listen to it. And they're like, Oh, some people like me. So, uh, so I'm going to do, I'm going to break the, the uh, cardinal rule. I'm going to ask a two part question, but that, um, so talk about that. How is it going? But then, you know, what are those things for that person who is listening and finding and new into it that they really should take to heart? Um, Hmm. Uh, so uh, uh, I'm, I'm trying to parse your question. Now. Yeah, uh, let's start. Yeah, see, yeah, I know yeah, that's so, why I'm back yeah. to a horrible. I, I literally right. got my host card back and now I just gave it up. <laughs> um, so, so again, all right. So how is the year going? What are you learning? What are the surprises? And then we'll jump back to the other question. Um, so what am I learning right now? Um, honestly, it's, it's, it's the gaining experience is where I'm at right now. Um, uh, one of uh i know that a lot of listeners will love this um but one of the the biggest tools that we use on campus is outcams uh we have over 50 of them around campus now um and it comes with being a smaller campus that it works well you know most of our classroom spaces you know are are built for fewer than 30 students you know we do have some larger classroom spaces where an outcam wouldn't be suitable but but for most of them it is something that that really does fit and and honestly fits what we can afford as well um so but learning you know i know there's lots of people out there who love usb as well and of course the alcam runs on usb so you know this morning i'm trying to figure out why you know this particular alcam isn't working you know and it comes down to it looks like it's an issue with uh the how usb is being passed by, by the extron usb switch that we've got in the podium um and you you don't, you don't get those details you know first day because it's just you know it, it is that that bulk of experience gaining and building on um and that's you know um that's probably the biggest thing on on the av side right now um, like I said, you know, we're, we have the help desk stuff as well. And so uh, I'm actually spending a lot of time in that right now. Um, but, uh, yeah, yeah, that, that, that's, that's kind of the learning side is, is just, just how this different instance is going to come together. And, you know, one of the things that, that goes along with that in terms of, you know, the, the feeling comfortable with that, um, is, you know, having, you know, a boss who's been, you know, in the field for 15 years and will come to me and say, you know, just remember whatever you do and whatever you break, I've been here 15 years. I've probably done it five times. Mm -hmm. And so, uh, no one's, you might get some glares, but no one's really going to have a crisis when you screw up. Yeah. And so, yeah, that's, that's the thing that I'll say also is, is it's, uh, we're not, we're not doing surgery, you know? And so I, I'll say from my perspective, it's also a field where, yeah, you want to do your best. Everyone's going to see it. Everyone's going to know how you did, but at the same time, there's some room to relax as well. Mm hmm so, um, yeah, you know, I, I love that. And I think that that's it's, it's an important point 
because uh you know i think a lot of times we can get over stress like like the world will fall apart and it won't you know now it doesn't mean we want downtime in a classroom right like don't oh, no, take yeah. that the wrong way we want everything yeah. up we do care um, but we do have to, we do have to put it into perspective, right? And yeah. you know, if you do the proper things, have backups, have the right support system, right? There are ways to mitigate those risks, and and so I love that. But by the way, the owl, you know, those would be fighting words. You know, there's been conversations. <laughs> Um, you know, I was going to say, I think that you got I half really the audience to going use one for a camera for this podcast, just oh, to to poke know? the bear and see what reactions I got. Yeah, you would, you know, you've got half the audience going, yeah, power to the people. And you got the other half that are just like, uh uh, that's it, canceled, you know, um, that those are those are some fighting words. But so I'm going to now ask your opinion then, um, and, and not on make an evaluation on the owl, but where do you now draw the line? Because the one thing that it does do well, right, is it works. You plug it in, it works, it gives you the 360, it does a lot of things. Then you get another side that will go, it's not a commercial install device, right? And, and mm -hmm. I don't know that either one of them are correct. And in fact, neither one. I think it's my own opinion, not a word, is it's appropriateness. And I think you actually touched on that. Where is it appropriate to use any solution, right? So how do you then make those, those drivers when you're making technology choices? So... You know, first of all, you know, the configuration of the space is, is the largest thing. You know, you always want to to be able to find the best tool for the job. And sometimes, I mean, sometimes the best tool is not going to be giving you, you know, 4K video. Uh, it might not be giving you 720p. You know, it might be, be pretty poor and pretty weak. Honestly, I don't know where the owl falls into that range. Once again, you say... People will be telling me exactly what they think the uh, range the owl gives, um, but looking at the constraints of what you have available resource-wise and and what task you need it to perform is a key thing. Um, I'm looking at a conference room right now. I'm looking at um, our our boardroom uh, that's used by by our presidential administration staff. I'm gonna be overhauling that this coming spring. Um, and right now there's a PTZ cam in there up on the wall. And of course, you know, the, the thing about PTZ is it's there and no one ever moves it. You know, it just, just sits there. Um, it doesn't capture the room well. Um, and they're going in and using it for conferences. And I've kind of taken a look and I've done an assessment. I've said, you know what's really going to perform much better in this space? Well, ideally, it's going to be three or four cameras around the room, but we don't have that. We don't have an operator for that. I'm going to put an outcam in the middle of that table. Mm -hmm. And what it'll do is in that small meeting room where you might have up to a dozen people in the room sitting around one table, it's going to bring them all together in a way that's uh, going to make um, all the conversations much more equitable than they would be with any single point mounted camera anywhere in there. Mm -hmm. um, and so that's that's really what I'm looking at is, is what is the function? What is it going to perform? What is it going to do? And for me, it's about communication. How is it going to aid communication rather than showing off how fancy my technology is? Because I think that's the easy trap to get into in this field is we always want to put, you know, the very best out there. That's why I set up a camera today instead of using the webcam on my laptop because I want something a little bit better. I'm not going to say that I think it's doing great, but uh, it's probably a little bit better than the webcam on a laptop. Um, but that doesn't necessarily mean that it's it's really what is needed for this moment. Um, yeah. You know, yeah. I, I say that the podcast, I didn't know we had video for the podcast until you sent me the invitation. I uh -huh. thought it was just See? audio only. Surprise, and so, surprise. You know, who cares We're about growing. the camera if only 5% of the audience is, is actually going to see it? And, of course, now mentioning it, maybe we'll get a few more now. They can uh, jump they on and say, you know, what is this guy talking about cameras so much on an audio podcast? <laughs> uh, but, uh, so, yeah, yeah. They, you know, that suitability question, you know, what is the scope of the project? What do you need to achieve? And for me, that that is the argument for the Alcam. Um and not to mention, like, I'll come back to it, budget. You know, I hear people talk about, you know, 
uh, 80 super friends several weeks ago had a question it might have been a month or two ago now uh, asking about you know what their budget was for their minimum space you know for the, the absolute minimum they could cut a basic space down to and and i hear, hear them you know talking about you know i can probably cut it down to to fourteen thousand, maybe twelve thousand dollars to to outfit a space our standard room comes in under in under ten thousand that's what we have budget for mm-hmm. you know i don't have budget to to be able to um put you know different cameras you know multiple cameras around the room you know i need one who's gonna have to be able to to perform you know multiple functions at once and you give me a camera that can scan around the room and has a microphone as well so i don't have to put a ceiling mic in to be able to pick up the room and no it's not perfect but it gets the job done you give me that you know at a thousand dollars then yeah i hundred percent agree um and this is one of the things you almost actually hit on one of my little pet peeves and it's a lot of the you know the r1s those and i'm in an r1 right um that often can talk like, you know, money's no object. And yeah. I like to say, you know, yeah, money's no object when you have none, right? Everything's an op, yeah. you know. And I, I remember even like, you know, that we you can do and look at our desks at home, home offices. We don't spend much money on it, but you get high quality, right? You yeah. can get good stuff. And I know that most people would yell at me and scream. We're gonna, I'm just gonna, I'm gonna you know, make everybody upset. I'm fine putting consumer grade stuff in if it fe- if it fits right, especially because we're looking at, um, you know, a different setup, different time, you know, with hybrid and, and remote. Mm-hmm. And I think that there's a sense of appropriateness. And let's now use the tools behind the scenes to make everything work, you know, and it's a funny story. Um, I won't give names, but let's just say I was in Japan at the corporate headquarters talking to the leadership of a major AV manufacturer and they wanted to record the conversation and they had, they wanted to zoom in a couple from another one of their offices. And it was an owl cam that was sitting on the table Mm -hmm. from a major manufacturer who makes cameras that we, that (laughs) they will swear that we we should put in every one of our spaces. Um, So I, I had to laugh at that because, but I think it goes to your point, right? Um, you know, and I, I don't, I don't want this to turn into the, should we use the owl or not, but let's turn it into something philosophical is, you know, if I'm looking at a graduate seminar room where it's 12 people around an executive table, yeah. How about something in the middle works? Cause now if I do the standard setup, I'm getting the back of half the room's heads and I'm getting the front of the other half the room's heads. Right. Mm-hmm. So there's a sense of appropriateness for the space. And I think that's really easy to get away from. And I totally agree with you, you know? I always wonder why people, when people say what it costs for to do a space and they're like, oh, 50 grand this. I'm like, what are you spending 50 grand on? I mean, like, what are you gold plating your, <laughs> uh, your microphones? I'm like, you know, I think one of the great things, even like combining this, going this back to the, you know, I, I think a lot of this comes from, you know, that sense of stewardship, right? That sense of, hey, mm-hmm. you know, can I create the best for the situation that's needed based upon the budget and the and the customer and the needs, right? And then, you know, if someone walks in and says, great, we got a donor, here's money and we're going to go out all out. I might not actually even say, fine, let's go all out. Let's still mm-hmm. find what's appropriate. And if we can save some money, then let's use that for another ministry. Let's use that for something else, right? And yeah. I think that as AV people, this is my soapbox, we always want to jump to bigger is better. And you know, higher technology is always better. And I think that that's a false statement. And it gets away from the importance of, of pedagogy and understanding the customer and the purpose behind teaching. So uh, besides me being right, what do you think about those comments? <laughs> um no, you're just wrong, Joe. That's just all there is to it. No, absolutely. Um, it's really, yeah, yeah. And, and I mean, shoot, coming from the church world, um, even at a small university, you know, like like Eastern Mennonite, it is, uh, it's been eye opener to to realize what gets pitched just because it no longer can be considered enterprise grade. Um, you know, it, it's 
you know, we're, we're, we're sending, you know, to recycling, you know, old one gigabit switches, you know, 48 ports. Because you can't use one gigabyte, you know, once again, you know, when you're dealing with actually being able to use 48 ports. Mm -hmm. I mean, I don't know what you're using at home. I know that one gigabyte, you know, certainly exceeds my needs at home. And so there, there is, there is a, a mental adjustment to realizing um, that, yes, you are working at a different level here now, um, but it's still, you know, it's still easy to go into an ex excess. And you talk about, you know, the donation, the major projects, you know, someone gives you, you know, $50,000, $50, to outfit a room. Uh, fantastic. When you've got that much for an annual budget for all your classrooms, then how do you maintain that room? Mm -hmm. You know, when a piece of equipment goes down, you know, and, and you've put a $20,000 projector in there and you don't have another $20,000 projector sitting on the shelf, you know, to be able to, to replace that. And once again, that's, that's half your budget for the year. How do you handle that? Mm -hmm. And so that's the other thing that my mind jumps to in terms of that conversation is, um, just long-term maintenance. What is the long-term maintenance cost as well? Mm -hmm. um, and, and it's calculations that I, once again, yes, I know we, we have uh, James Madison University down the road from us. And I, I, I don't even try to pretend that I understand the scope of the budget they have. You know, it's a state university. You know, I think you've got about, you know, something like, probably 50, 60 times the student population that we have. Um, and so, so it is another world. Um, but even so, I mean, it, 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 it's, to me, there's a question of responsibility that, that comes down to not wasting as well. You know, you, you mentioned the word, word stewardship and, and I think that is a big part of it. Um, and do I, you know, so I mentioned we're moving up, you know, we're going to be hiring. Am I going to be looking for someone who is able to solve a problem just by throwing more money at it? Hmm. No, I want the, some, the person who's got the skills to, to, to make things work with the resources that are available. And personally, you know, I think that's going to be true wherever you're at. I mean, I know you do a lot of hiring, Joe. And uh, it, it doesn't take a lot of skill to just throw money at a problem. That, that doesn't impress me much. Um, so, um, so yeah, yeah, uh, some of my thoughts there. Trying not to just say, yes, you're right, Joe, but, but I think in a lot of ways you're, you're really on the mark. So. Yeah. No, and I think you're, you're absolutely right there. And I, I, you know, I've always said this, this was part of the, even the things when, when BC and I were found, you know, founding Hetma, was like we all have the same problems there's just more zeros behind some of them but the same struggles same issues you know i might have scale where i'm at you know but you know that also means i might get you know i, I can i throw in 10 times more stuff yeah i also get 10 times more trouble calls right like like it's <laughs> yeah. all scale on both ends right yeah. um so it's like so but it all comes down to uh the struggle the things the finding the answers and finding the solutions so Something that you kind of alluded to early on was the community. So how have, I know you've gotten involved. This is how I see you online on uh, James's Slack channel. I had to say that just so he reads <laughs> this episode. Um, and then, you know, and also, uh, you know, the Hetma channel. I, I, I was surprised that you've said you've only been in the side of it since January because I've seen you in there and it's been, I felt like I should have invited you on the show three years ago, but you haven't been in it. So how has the community really helped you and have you found You've obviously taken advantage of it and leveraged it, or I wouldn't have felt like mm -hmm. you've been around forever, right? So talk about that. Um, I mean, really, gosh, I mean, just so so learning learning what's out there, I think, has probably been the biggest thing that's been helpful to me. You know, you know what? You know who who are the manufacturers that you can rely upon? Um, who 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 can deliver? 
you know, that's that's a whole conversation in and of itself. You know, who can you count on to actually have the product show up uh, when you need to show up? Um, questions, you know, re regarding, you know, programming questions to, to have that resource of people out there who, you know, when, when you're you're just stumped because you can't get, you know, one function to work, you know, to be able to put that out there and say, hey, this this isn't coming together for me. And the fact that not only do you have, you know, all these people reading it, but you got people who are eager to respond and help. Um, it's been absolutely fantastic. Um, yeah, odd projects, you know, and, and maybe it doesn't seem odd to everyone, but, you know, we're sitting here with this uh, with this scheduling device. You know, this room schedule has been sitting on a shelf for three years and my boss hands it to me and wants me to take it and make it work. The fact that, you know, I can can ask, you know, what different people's experiences have been, not just with a particular piece of a dice, but, you know, with just these room scheduling systems and, and get honest feedback on that. And uh, um, it's just it's really been helpful to 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 be able to rely not just on the experience within my office but the larger community um, and so that's that's been you know the bigger part um, and you know the, the the testimonies that you see to to products that people have enjoyed and work well um, and the testimonies that that people give to uh to systems and communities that have worked well also, you know, different places connect. It, you start in one, you get referred to others. You know, how many places <laughs> in the world does that happen? Um, yeah. But, you know, it, it does happen there. And so it's one of the things that's really appreciated. It just kind of adds on to itself. Um, so if anyone is out there listening, um, you know, you've heard us throw these names around, you know, HETMA, uh, Higher Ed Technology Managers Association, uh, Higher Ed AV IT Slack. Uh, these are things that you really need to be checking out. They're they're great groups. Um, so once again, if you are new, I will encourage you to get into it because uh, it's a testimony. You know what Joe's saying. I've only been involved, you know, for eleven months, and I don't feel like I'm showing up that much presence there. Uh, but at the same time, you know, I'm obviously getting a type of welcome and inclusion uh, that, you know, really is helping to push me along um, and and isn't making it stand out either that that I'm really as new to this space as I am. Yeah. Yeah. No, you know, I, I, I love that because I think you're doing the right things and taking advantage of the tools that are there. Right. Um, and now I know you've 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 had the blessing, you know, of having Steve Gibbs, right, and kind of say here, point pointing you to yeah. these places early on. Um, so you know what then, you know, for maybe those who are just searching, I'm kind of gonna, going back to that. You know, I found this, you know, I found this podcast. I'm listening. This, this sounds interesting. But like, so what if you, someone doesn't have that mentor, as you just mentioned, getting involved in these things, but what is that step? What gave you the confidence? Because often I know there's a lot of just lookers, right? I know it. I see the numbers. I know how I, I'm an admin on Hetma, right? I see how many members we have. I see how many people log in. And so there's a lot that just look, but don't engage. What kind of advice then do you have for that? Or maybe people are just too afraid. I think imposter syndrome is a big thing, you know, afraid to ask the dumb question or whatever, right? I mean, I don't know. Mm -hmm. I think you get where I'm going with this. So what kind of like for that type of, for that person? Yeah, I'll just say, you know, I've never had anyone make fun of any question that I've ever asked. Yeah, and, and so... Like I said, we, we all start out at ground zero somewhere. And so just jump in. Um, you know, that's that's the encouragement that I can give. Uh, the great thing about the Internet um, is that, you know what? Uh, you can ask that question and it's going to be gone and forgotten in, you know, 30 days anyhow. You know, if, if if you're like me and you're not paying for a premium Slack subscription, it scrolls off the screen after 90 days and you can't find it anymore. 
Mm-hmm. Uh, so, so don't worry about that. But, but in all seriousness, uh, this is a community that is focused on helping, you know, helping each other, you know, equipping each other. Um, I have never once in a year's time encountered any spirit of, I'm not even, saying, even a spirit of competitiveness, you know, maybe a little ribbing back and forth, <laughs> but, you know, no spirit of competitiveness um, in between the people participating in the higher ed space. Yeah. You know, and, and so really everyone out there, honestly, largely is in higher ed because they want to help others, um, because they want to build others up. They want to want to strengthen others, you know. And so ju- just know that they're coming to it with that spirit and, and it's worth just stepping out because you're not going to suffer for it. Yeah, no, that is fantastic advice. And I, I totally agree with you. You know, one of the things that I always seem to say is that you know, it's very different in higher ed as opposed to other areas in commercial integration side is that we are collaborator, collaborators and colleagues. We are not competitors, right? We yeah. have this idea of sharing. Yeah, sure, our schools might be going after similar students. But the fact that we can come in, if I have a question about something, I get a random email saying I got to go build an XYZ now. I can go on the community and say, who's done this? And uh, there's going to be 10 people who will jump on a call with me and go, here's Mm -hmm. what I did. Here's how we did it. Here's the challenges we had. Here's the line drawings, right? You could never have an integrator do that, right? You never have that type of, in fact, I had an integrator who wanted to like have me sign it, you know, uh, a non-compete, like that I would include if just for getting, you know, talking design with them. It's like, come on, that's exactly why you guys are going under and why integration is coming in house, right? That mentality. And so it's funny because I think you are right on with that. And it's taking that advantage of that community that we all care, right? We're all here together. And I think that's one of the things that really makes this special. So totally agree. Totally agree. So, all right, I, I knew this. I knew this. I was going to enjoy talking to you. And we're, we're at the time where I have to go to the rapid round or we're going to be here forever, um, which is OK. But so rapid round of questions here. Uh, this is the part where there is no uh, I just random questions that I make up. I've been making a few notes as we've been going along. Just things uh, based upon our conversation that I make up uh, as we go. There's no right or wrong answer unless I have an opinion of my own, in which case there could be a wrong answer. Uh, so everyone gets the same first question. Uh, only part of the show that is scripted, except for all the other parts I script. And um, it is, what is the your favorite college tradition? Gosh, Joe, I, I've only been here a year. Uh, I don't know what's tradition you, and what's you can, not you, yet. You can go to Liberty. <laughs> I mean, you can use, you don't have to use your employer, you know? I mean, you say your favorite um, tradition is getting paid every other week. I mean, that's a good one, too. <laughs> Uh, one of my favorite traditions is, is, um, eating together. Mm. Yeah. And and once again, that might might not be everywhere. Um, but sitting down in the cafeteria for a $4 meal together, which sometimes looks like it was, you know, $4 spent on it and that was it. Um, sometimes, sometimes better. Um, but really just being able to sit down and talk together and you know have guys from network systems joining us network admins um be talking about whatever projects we've got going at the moment or whatever's going on at home at the moment um but really just being able to share space together share space around food together yeah yeah um i totally agree it's funny because i missed that from cal baptist we had such the amazing like um uh, food cafeteria and like even when vendors would come go oh where are we going to go out to eat we're like we're going to our cafeteria and like what? I'm like no it's the best place around um so i i totally agree i love that the sense of breaking bread with one another and having that community because it just says so much for the team morale there's so much for your your connectivity because we are all in this together so totally agree that's a great answer. And since we're on the topic of food, it seems that I always seem to be, I'm slowly making this the second question. I don't mean to, but it moves that way. When I come and visit, right? They're in Virginia, right? So I come and look at campus, but I got to eat. Where are we going? Where are you taking me out? Where are we going out at night? What, what are we doing in town? Taste of pie. 
taste of time. Okay, that one. Was yeah, nice. we're, we're out of here. We're out here in uh, rural Virginia. Um, but the, uh, the Mennonite communities, the Anabaptist communities have a long history of welcoming refugees. And so we really have a lot of ethnic diversity uh, in our communities. And uh, Taste of Thai is, is actually, they've been here for, I was a student, not here at Eastern Mennonite, but another local college, Bridgewater College, uh, 20 years ago, and they were going strong then. And uh, yeah, it, it's a favorite. We have a lot of department meals over there at Taste of Thai. Oh my gosh. Um, oh boy. Um, you know, and I love Thai food and it's really sad that it is 1249 right now in LA when we're having this conversation. It is lunchtime and I don't have time to go get Thai. I have a feeling I will be Uber Eatsing uh, some Thai food uh, on, our, on my way. This is, oh, that's a solid answer. Okay. Um, oh, all right. Um, oh, now I'm hungry. Now I'm hungry. All right. Uh, next. All right. You, you've got a great mentor there in Steve Gibbs. But there's got to be something about him. What's a quirk about him that the rest of us need to know? Uh, he's a serious disc golf addict. Oh, we have a disc, disc golf, golf course on campus, and mm -hmm. and he's slowly converting the whole department. Uh, we've got one fellow who's temp right now who, who I think he hired just because he's kind of uh, moving on close to pro levels with disc golf. So... Uh, that's the thing to know. I was going to say the calf is good, but but sometimes the calf just gets abandoned just to be able to go up on the hill and play disc golf. All right, all right. Yeah, I, yeah. I, I I see that too. All right. Um, that's that's pretty good. Um, so now I'm wondering if next next year at Infocom we just set up a disc golf thing throughout the uh, the show floor. How good could he like right through the middle of stuff, like going between trees and. <laughs> Uh, he would he would judge me if I bragged on him. Uh, we've got some others around, like I said. I, the, the guy we've got who's on temp is, uh, yeah, could go, you know, definitely uh, threading, you know, the needle through the trees and all that. But uh, but no, he's pretty good, and and I, I'm slowly trying to to get into it because I do enjoy it a little bit. But uh, but yeah, yeah, it's yeah, go right. for the course at, at, at Infocom. Uh, I, I don't think he's going to be going. I think he wants to send me instead. All so right. uh, I, I'll bring some discs with me and I'll hand them to other people to throw. <laughs> well, and uh, if you're going to be there, then we're going to sign you up to volunteer at the Hetma booth. So there we go. Um, now, all right, next. Um, so, well, if that's his hobby, what's yours? What's your downtime ritual? Uh, fly fishing is what I'm always trying to find more time to do. Um, uh, I enjoy just uh, being out. We've got a lot of uh, state forest land and park land around us. Um, as much as I enjoy the technology side of things, I really love it when I can't get a cell signal uh, and just quiet and peaceful. And so that's that, that's that's what I'm always trying to get more time to do. Do I get out there to do it enough? No, I don't. Um, but but that's that's what I try to get to. All right. Well, then I need fishing advice. So I swear I live on a private lake. OK, so I live on a private lake where it's, you know, it's a man-made lake. But we got our bow. My dad, you know, everyone knows my backyard's got my bow. But there's and it's it's a it's it's a stock lake. So there's catfish, bass, you know, bluegill. I swear there's no fish in there because I've caught two in the many years I've lived here. I've only caught two fish and a crawdad. That's it. OK, but you, the kid next door who's five years old drops a thing straight down and catches something every minute. Everyone. Catch, so I swear there's no fish in here. What advice do you give me to, to catch something? Why do they hate me? I was going to say, if you can't catch bluegill, then you just need to take lessons from the five year old. That's Man. all there is to it, Joe. <laughs> just, I got nothing for you. Oh. Sorry on that. Oh man, uh, no! I swear that they hate. They look at me and they just laugh. Like it's it's a joke. I guarantee you, there's like a weekly meeting of the fish at the bottom of the lake where the, like I'm on a board somewhere. There, like it's they're, a they're conspiracy. Just yeah, bluegill. Mm -hmm. Gosh, Joe, I have I have picked clover buds beside a pond and put them on a hook and cast them out and caught bluegill. So you know, yeah, mm -hmm. they, they've mm -hmm. got it in for you. That's all there is to it. Oh man. 
Yeah. Ah, well, I was enjoying this episode. No, just kidding. All right. Now, all right. So next, all right. Uh, a, a year into this, what's your favorite part of uh, outside of the community and all that? What's your favorite piece of gear? Your little thing you're, you're, that you've kind of like, I love this thing. Uh, Xtron 1804 DO scaler. All right. Yeah. Uh, that That is, it's, it's the core of the classrooms that we build right now. And it just, it works. It works. I don't think, I don't think I've ever had a problem with one. Um, and it just it pulls everything together and and i'm not going to say that it's you, you've got to know what you're doing obviously just like anything else and all the programming and all that but uh yeah that that's definitely my favorite and no not sexy not exciting to a lot of people but but you you find enough equipment that doesn't work and you appreciate the ones that do yeah, no, that's a solid. It's a workhorse. It's a workhorse. So that's a good, good choice. Um, solid choice. All right. Uh, next, you got to put the pastor hat back on. Um, you know, uh, let's say I'm, you know, I, I'm, I'm struggling. I'm having a hard time here at, at working uh, with my colleagues and in higher ed. All our faculty are getting. I, I want to leave. How do you? What's your pastoral advice for my sanity and my mental health? step away yeah. take a break uh, i was going to say um the 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 boss who who is departing that that steve's going to be uh taking her place um you know made clear to us hey anytime you need to just take a 10 minute walk around campus go do it mm. you know and and that's you know advice that i would give to those who are leading departments as well is uh make certain that you're giving you know your employees um you know the room to be able to to take time uh for some mental health stuff when they need to um and you know and the other thing you know that i will say also is it's always worth remembering that the world doesn't rest on your shoulders as much as we try to take it up sometimes and make it rest on our shoulders as much as we want to to honestly try to maintain that sense of self-importance. Um, it really is better to, to, to step back sometimes and just remember that, hey, you know, it's not my job to keep the world from falling apart. Um, and that if I let go sometimes, it'll be good to do and realize that no, it doesn't necessarily fall apart. I love that. I love that. That was unexpected too. That's good pastoral advice there. You're right. There is, and there is something about just that, 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 that unload. Like I like the the walk thing. I think that's just great advice, just in general. Like get out of the office. Just get the oh, air. Yeah. Get get yourself reground yourself because that makes you more effective. That's kind of like the same thing. Like I don't have. I've gotten into this habit where during vacations or you know, spring breaks, holiday breaks, you know, when we close for Christmas time and all that, I will not do projects for the team. Like we're not going to squeeze extra thing in be in between. Like summer will be for that. Summer will do it. But the mm -hmm. rest of these times, just as the school is taking a break, you need a break. And I've kind of learned that. Like, and a lot of times I hear that, oh, we've got to do this over fall break. We got to do this over spring break. We got to get, we're going to get this project. And all you're doing is adding stress to your people. Like let them enjoy the time. Let them have a breather because there's no one on campus. And now the calls are not going to come in and maybe they can catch yeah. up on stuff. So I, I love that. That is fantastic advice. That's good. All right. So the very last thing is just, uh, it's a soapbox moment. The little, it's called Give Me a Minute. Uh, it's, it's, it's a show that I, I started for a while and couldn't keep it up because it was a show. But here's the thing. It is, uh, it's, it's one minute. You get one minute to pretend the show is yours. Whatever. If you've ever wanted to have a podcast to talk about anything, I've had <laughs> baseball, I've had tech, non-tech, I've had, you name it. This has gone all over the place. Um, one minute to talk about anything you want. I don't time it. So it's plus or minus a minute um, to talk about anything you want. The show is yours and the time starts now. Well, shoot, Joe, you really do have to give me a lead up on some of these questions. When you do, you do, but I'm still, I'm blanking. What do I want to talk about? I want to talk about the Shenandoah Valley. 
Uh, oh, by right. gosh, if you have never been out here to Virginia to visit the Shenandoah Valley, uh, you are missing out. Uh, this is uh, my, my common people, you know, talk about the, the, the motto of West Virginia is almost heaven. Well, that's because they're one mountain range over. So <laughs> come on down and join us. Uh, it's a place with a, it's, it's a rural space at the same time. It's got a lot of diversity. Uh, you've got, you know, the beauty of the mountains. You've got the beauty of the farmland. And it's a place that I absolutely love. I uh, have lived around the, uh, the East Coast a little bit, out in the Midwest, in Ohio and Indiana a little bit. And I am so glad to be back here and to be able to call this home. So, uh, so I don't know. There, there, there's a you know kind of out of left field maybe for you. Um, that was good. This, no, this, this is a good place to be. And do come visit us at Eastern Mennonite because you're not going to find a better community than we have right here. I love it. See, that's a good one. That was a good one. See, you know, there's no right or wrong answer to that one. And that was a solid one. Uh, and the last and most important question is, how can people connect with you, get to know you in case they should choose to do so? Okay. Um, well, uh, HETMA, um, there in the, uh, the HETMA boards, I'm, I'm there. Uh, the Higher Ed AVIT Slack, you can reach me there. Um, and other than that, uh, just campus email is, is the best way to reach out to me. Uh, Daniel.house at emu.edu. Uh, and be glad to hear, um, tell you more about the wonders of the Shenandoah Valley, uh, tell you a little bit more about how owls really aren't that evil. Um, <laughs> and, uh, and tell you where you shouldn't use them as well. I'd be happy to do that also. So, uh, but be glad to hear hear from anyone who'd like to to talk a little bit more. That was fantastic. Yeah, um, uh, uh, this has been so much fun. I enjoyed this. Uh, I couldn't figure out a way out there to come visit. Yeah, um, and really, uh, and not just for the Thai food, but the Thai yeah. food will be an important. <laughs> uh, let me not let me not lie. So, uh, again, Daniel, thank you so much for uh, joining everyone. I do encourage you to connect. Um, and of course, you can find me uh, at Just Iowa on all the socials at Higher Ed AV, follow Higher AV, all of our, our host of shows that we have um, and, and articles. You can also find you know, Hetma underscore or org on all the socials, Hetma.org online to get commu uh, connected with the community. And of course, as always, all the opinions expressed here are not necessarily those of our respected institutions, employers, or uh, uh, sponsors of the show. And if you did not like any of these opinions, there may be better ones next time. And I took way too long. that My outro music stopped, but that's okay. I give up. My host pass again. So now welcome to three seconds of silence while I put the cover photo on. And I then hit in recording. Bye, all. <laughs>